Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. So today we're going to be working on a Xbox One which has been sent in for liquid damage. I can clearly see that some sort of liquid has gone inside the fan vent which means that we've probably got liquid all over the inside as well. So we're going to take a look but first of all what we're going to do is we're going to power it on and see exactly what's happening with this and then we can try and figure out what the next step is going to be. Right, so I'm going to power this on. 3, 2, 1. Okay, so straight away then, if I just turn this around so you can see it. When I power this on, you see it will go straight off as soon as I turn it on. So I hear the fan kicking in, which is a good sign, because it means that most likely this isn't going to be an APU issue. I'm not going to say won't, but most likely it won't be an APU issue. So let's just go ahead now and start opening this up and I'm pretty sure that we all know by now how to open up one of these consoles so I'll skip through that I'll just open it up and jump back on the video that was a little bit difficult I must admit because there's a decal on it obviously and that makes it a million times more difficult to get into and unfortunately to even have any chance of reassembling it properly you have to cut them I cut the decal as cleanly as I could um, but it's just one of them things I just really didn't have much of a choice other than to cut it. Pretty sure if I get this working, they're not going to mind. Already, without even looking at this, I can see some kind of gun call down here. Right, okay, so taking out the components then. Take off that front panel. And now let's flip her over and remove these eight screws from the bottom. Right, okay, so motherboard ready to come out now. Um, and if we take a look here, we've got a lot of gunk here. I'm really not sure what's going in this, but... It's certainly not good. Hopefully we haven't got too much damage on the board. It is quite sticky. So I'm assuming it's probably some sort of soft drink. Ooh dear. Uh-oh. Well, this isn't good so far, is it, ladies and gents? There's a lot of corrosion all the way around that chassis. This is not looking good, I'm going to be honest. I think it might be milkshake. Maybe. Anyway, let's put this aside. Um, Yeah, I'm going to put some gloves on. Okay, so... The reason I put gloves on is because I don't know what this is. And, uh, you know, I obviously don't really want it on my hands, to be honest. Uh, yeah, this is all going to need a big clean out. Right, so let's take off the clamp. Right, let's try and get this off. It's a little bit stuck, to be honest, this clamp. So I've got to be very careful. There we go. Okay, so that's obviously going to need a really good clean. Mm, what we're dealing with oh dear oh dear right that's gone under the apu most definitely gone under the apu that's unfortunate that is very unfortunate this is probably never going to work again hmm that's gone on the apu i mean that said it might not have actually gone under the apu um let's not jump to conclusions okay so let's just give this a nice bath in isopropyl for now So I'm going to give the area a really good scrub and then I'm going to have a look under the microscope and see if I can see any obvious signs of damage. And I just splashed IPA in my eye. It is called IPA. Get it? <laughs> <coughs> oh wow. That's a lot of IPA I'm breathing in. If I keep breathing that in, I'm going to have to change it to DIPA. Hmm. Okay, so what is going to be the next step? I think the next step is going to be to try and apply some power to this. First of all, I'm going to just try and get some IPA underneath the APU. So I'm going to put the board on an angle and I'm just going to pour down. And I'm going to do that a few times. Just try and wash out anything that might be under there. Now I know, this is, I know that's probably not going to make much of a difference, but we can, we can always try. We can always try, can't we? Okay, so what I think I want to do now is I think I probably want to take a look under the microscope and just see if I can see the actual solder balls themselves. I can give this a proper wash later. Um, the main thing was just getting a lot of that residue off. 
There we go. Let's flip it around now. Uh, I mean, in terms of the back of it, it's not too bad. I mean, it needs a bit of a clean-up, yes, but I can't see anything obvious. Uh, I mean, this is the APU area here, and uh, I can't see nothing nothing concerning on the back around by the APU, which is a good sign. It might not have actually hit the APU. It might have killed itself before it actually got chance to do anything to the APU. So what might have happened is some of these some of these power regulation MOSFETs here might have blown before it got a chance to do anything to the APU and then the rest of it could have just seeped down onto the APU and then, you know, just kind of stood there. Uh, so it's not a guarantee that we're going to have an issue with the APU yet. Uh, what we need to do is we need to obviously have a look at the solder balls around the edge. I'm going to pop the board on an angle, have a look through the microscope and see if I can see the balls underneath and just check all of the four sides and just see if there's any obvious corrosion because if there's any obvious corrosion then this, this APU is going to need a reflow. There is no way around it other than to reflow the APU and if that don't work it would be a case of reballing the APU or even replacing it. Now the problem with replacing the APU is we also have to replace the EEPROM as well because it's coded to the APU. So to change the EEPROM we need to change the APU, to change the APU we need to change the EEPROM. So yeah it's a bit of a pain, it's a bit of a nightmare and it's certainly not going to be a viable repair. Now I don't mind giving it a reflow using the BJ rework station. Other than that I don't really fancy sitting here reboarding an APU. Not for the value of the console and what the customer is going to be willing to pay to get this up and running again. Unless there's obvious data on there that they need, I don't think they're gonna be paying the kind of price what you, what I would expect for an APU reball. I'm gonna have a look at the solder balls. I'm gonna see what's going on. See if I can see any kind of obvious corrosion underneath the APU. If I can, I'll reflow the APU. If I can't, then I'll just apply some power to it and see if we can figure out what else is going on. Right, okay, so I've just taken a look on everywhere that I can pretty much see. I can't really see anything that concerns me under there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my multimeter and I'm gonna go into continuity mode. I'm just gonna check for shorts on the 12 volt rail. So the way I do that is by taking my ground probe and popping that on ground. And then if we just check one of these coils here, so we've got a few coils here, and if we just check one of these coils, it doesn't matter what side, uh, we should not hear a beep. Okay, and the 12 volt rail isn't shorted to ground. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the power regulation MOSFETs. So these little ICs here, these little chips here, are power regulation MOSFETs, and we can get a reading off these on diode mode by popping one probe on the left pin, and then another probe on the left hand side of this resistor here. So, and the same for these ones as well. There's a resistor by all of them. Um, and what we should get is, we should expect somewhere in the region of around about 0.500 on a diode mode reading. Um, you can flip them around and the other, the other way should read around about 1850. So, hopefully you can see that there. I'm going to pop the red probe on the resistor and left probe on pin 1. And you can see we've got 667 there on the diode mode reading, which is a perfectly normal reading. When we flip the leads around, we should get about 1800, or 1 1.8 rather, between 1.8 and 1.9 volts. It's a little bit difficult with the multimeter there. Right, for some reason, I'm not giving a reading the other side at all. Right, so black probe on the resistor, and I'm not giving a reading that side, given that I'm definitely on the uh, on the correct pin. Right, I'm not getting readings that side at all. Right, so that reading is 666, which is correct. 666 is correct, 666 is correct, you can give or take a few, um, 677 which the end one is always a little bit higher which is fine, right so these are actually reading okay, except the fact that I'm not getting a reading when I flip the probes, uh, right okay so I'm trying to get a reading on when I flip the leads on these and I'm not getting no readings at all and I'm definitely on the probe point. Not getting any readings whatsoever. The readings on the other way actually read fine though, which is interesting to say the least. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the multimeter away and I'm going to take a quick look under the microscope. I can see a few burnt capacitors and stuff, but nothing too major. We do have a, we do have a little component here. I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's some sort of voltage regulator. If I get some tweezers, I can point. 
just here we do have a couple of burnt components now i'm not sure if these are going to be bad or not they may need to be replaced same as just here there's quite a few burnt capacitors i'm not sure if they're burnt or whether it's just crud off whatever went inside the console a few burnt capacitors up here around the ram which is not good what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply some power to this i'm going to see if i can find any kind of heat spots and see if there's any obvious area what's getting warm because if there's heat spots then that's likely going to indicate a short without trying to turn it on i'm just going to feel around the board and uh, nope everything appears normal so now i'm going to take the front panel and i'm going to attempt to turn it on so i'll just get myself a touch panel uh, i'm just going to pop this touch panel on so now while i'm turning it on again i'm going to try and feel for heat spots yeah this isn't showing any signs of heat at all i mean without sitting here replacing components there's really not a lot more i can test the issue here is the fact that i'm not getting a reading on the one side which is concerning because i don't know whether that's my multimeter or whether it's the board itself and if it's the board itself then it could be a number of th a number of things it could be the mosfets themselves it could be one of the power regulation chips uh, such as this one here or it could be the apu then that's the problem it's just going to be a process of elimination and the only way to eliminate any kind of errors is to sit here replacing chips so i think that's probably going to be the next step on this one i don't mind spending a while on this it is a child console um so i don't mind spending a while on this trying to figure out what's wrong with it right okay so i've got myself a genuine xbox power brick here uh, it's actually the next day. I had quite a few things to do yesterday, so I didn't get a chance to carry on with this. Uh, but this is obviously the same console. So let's pop in the power. And... Okay, so it's still doing exactly the same. It's turning itself on and then straight back off again so you see it's just it's just going on going straight back off right so given the fact that there's no indication whatsoever on what's going on with this machine I think the best course of action is to just start changing some MOSFETs because uh, I don't really want to be reflowing the APU or the safe bridge if I can help it. So I think the best course of action, like I said, is just to replace some MOSFETs and hope for the best, basically. Right, so because of the fact that I'm not getting any sort of strange readings from the multimeter, um, I'm not really sure where to start on these in terms of the actual MOSFETs themselves. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the most obvious signs of damage from these. And this first resistor here, this first resistor is quite obviously a little bit burnt up. So... I think what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the first one and make my way across, uh, testing as I go. Right, so that resistor looks good. This one looks quite obviously bad. Uh, R9D4 looks a bit dodgy, so... Let me just take the multimeter. And I'll pop it back into continuity mode. I'm just going to check for shorts around the area. Ah, there's actually a resistor missing here. Number four, we've got a resistor missing. So that's probably knocked itself off the board.
So there's obviously a fair bit of crud. But other than that... Right, okay, so... Like I said, R, R9D4 does look a little bit funky. Hmm. Right, so R9D4, I said it looks kind of funky, and we don't have continuity between the top and the bottom. In fact, we're reading 75 ohms, and it should be... It shouldn't be... Uh, it shouldn't be reading that. It should be around... It should be almost 0 ohms, and we're reading 75, so... So that resistor straight away is bad. Um, so that's not a normal reading for that resistor at all. So let's start changing some stuff here, shall we? Because that's not a normal reading. Um, all of the rest of them are reading at, at almost zero ohms, which is absolutely fine. Uh, there shouldn't be any resistance from one side of the resistor to the other, or there should be very little resistance from one side of the resistor to the other, and that's reading 75 ohms, which is pretty high, um, and we don't have continuity between the top and the bottom of the resistor itself. So let's go ahead and change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off, and in fact what I'm going to do, because that resistor looks like it's blown, I'm going to remove these caps as well, um, and the reason for that is because they do look a little bit cruddy and dodgy, so I'm going to remove a few caps, and I'm going to remove this resistor, and I'm also going to remove this MOSFET here as well, so I'm going to change that MOSFET, and I'm going to change these here, and then we'll see what we've got afterwards. Right, so I'm just going to remove these using hot air. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the solder that's on there with some leaded solder. Make it easy to put the new components on. So I'm going to add a bit of flux. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some leaded solder and then I'm going to wick away to clean them up. And then I'll add some fresh leaded solder afterwards as well. Okay, so that's all of the old solder removed. So now I'm going to take a cotton bud and some isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to give this area a little bit of a scrub. Let's get rid of this, uh, all this gunk that's around here. That's obviously gone on there when the liquid was spilled. Just give it a clean. So we don't want this area dirty when we put the new solder down. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some fresh flux and I'm going to put some fresh leaded solder on. Prepare these pads for new components. Right, so the three pads on the top of the MOSFET have merged. And that's pretty common because they are all the same pad. Uh, so it's pretty common that the, um, the little bit of conformal coating comes off, so it's nothing to worry about there. Right, so... I'm 
I've got myself a donor board. And I'm going to take these components off. And I'm just going to swap them onto the other board. So we need three capacitors. We need a resistor and we need the MOSFET. Now, I know that this board works. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this donor board at all. It does work. It does power on. It stays on. Um, the only thing wrong with this is there's no disk drive, disk drive to it. So we can't install an operating system. That's why it's a donor board. So I know full well that this works. So I know all of these components that I'm taking off here work as well. Okay, so exactly the same method as before. Just going to use some hot air. And I'm going to start with the MOSFET. I could use a brand new MOSFET, but I might as well just take one off a donor board if I'm going to be using the donor board anyway. There we go. So I'm going to keep the resistor inside the tweezers. And you can see just how small it is. You can't actually see it on the camera. Um, but it is there. So you can barely see that on the camera. It's, it's so small. So we're done with the donor board for now. So I'm going to pop that out of the way. Um, we shouldn't need that donor board for any more components for this circuit. Hopefully. Um, we will need one for one of the other rows um, because there's a resistor missing. And now I'm going to I'm going to be soldering these on using hot air. Right, so I saw the solder melt, which means that's in place. So all I've done is held that resistor in place until the solder solidifies again. And now I can add some more flux just to that area and surface tension. If I, if I turn the airflow down, surface tension should take that resistor into place without blowing it all over the place because it's already tacked down. There we go, so that's that's gone molten again now, and if I just give the resistor a little tap, that's in position. So that's gone right into position very nicely indeed. So now I'm going to do the same and pop on these capacitors. Okay, so they're in place. Time for the MOSFET. There we go. And again for the MOSFET, I'm going to add some flux. And for this one, I'm going to blast it with air. So I'm going to turn the airflow up fairly high. And then I'm just going to blast the area with there, make sure it goes into position. There it goes, that's pulled itself back into place. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that's done. Right, what next? So let's take a look. I know I've got a missing component. Right, so the missing component is here. So on number four, we've got a missing resistor, and also these capacitors. I'm not sure, not too sure about. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a load of flux first, and I'm just going to reflow the area. 
heat it all up, get it all nice and warm. And that's going to remelt the solder basically. And that stinks. That absolutely stinks. I think this might be urine or something. I'm not sure what that is, but it stinks. It smells like urine. It might be cat wee or something. Oh, that's disgusting. Right, okay. So, that was melted enough to knock them into position, or knock them out of position and then back into position. Um, yeah, oh wow, that stunk. I was just heating that area up. I think that might be cat urine, to be honest with you. Um, that's not nice at all, whatever it is. It's either cat urine or whatever it was has gone off. No, that was not pleasant. Right, uh, anyway, let's, um, let's carry on with this. And this is why I wore gloves yesterday. Okay, so, so we need to replace this resistor, the one that's missing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, add leaded solder. I'm just going to scrape away with the soldering iron. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. While I'm there, I'm going to replace these capacitors as well, because they do look a little bit burnt up. So I'm going to replace those capacitors at the same time. Uh, it's not going to take much longer to change them. And I can flip them off the donor board while I take the resistor. Uh, chances are with that resistor what's happened is it's probably... It's, pro it's probably just knocked itself off when I was cleaning it. It was probably badly burnt and just knocked itself off during cleaning. Um, and hopefully... Hopefully this is going to fix the issue. Okay. Yeah, that stinks like cat urine. Honestly. Well, not cat urine. It stinks like urine. I'm not sure. It's probably a cat or something. Most likely. Uh, what can you do? There's not really a lot you can do, to be honest. It's part of the job. It's not a very pleasant lifestyle. I'll give it, I'll give it that. Uh, right, so let's add some flux. So the reason I'm replacing these is just because there's a lot of gunk around them. And not only that, they do look pretty badly burnt up. So chances are that they might be faulty. Um, but while I'm replacing the resistor, I may as well replace these because it doesn't take much longer to do it. Right, so again, just like before, I'm going to now wick that away and get rid of that solder. Okay. So again, I'm going to clean it using isopropyl and a cotton bud. Let's give the area a clean. And now let's add some more flux and some fresh leaded solder. Okay. So that should be ready for some new components. So I'm going to move that board out of the way again. And pop the donor board in position. Uh, 
And again, I'm just going to do exactly the same as before. I'm going to take all the components that I need. And then finally I'll take that resistor and keep it in my hand. There's one. Two. Three. And then finally, I'm going to get this resistor. There we go. And I'm going to keep it in my hand, pinched in between the tweezers. Because there is no way on earth that I'm finding this if I drop it. So, I have to be very, very careful and very, very quick indeed to get this back on. Okay, so, the board's already prepped. It's already ready to accept the new resistor. Right, so unfortunately my camera crashed then, and I had to put the resistor down. But uh, luckily I managed to see where it was. Uh, I'm not really sure why my camera keeps crashing on OBS, it's a little bit weird. Um, I'm using a C920 and it keeps freezing. Right, so just in case I didn't have the footage of me taking the... Uh, Donor, donor parts off the board, I apologise. Right, so that resistor's on there. Time for the capacitors. And I'm going to use some flux and knock them into position with surface tension afterwards. So I'm not really too concerned about positioning right now. Okay, so now, let's just pop some flux there. And I've just realised that my camera's out of focus, unfortunately. So I apologise for that. Okay, so let's just add some flux. And um, again, I'm going to let surface tension pull the components into place. Good. And now I'm just going to clean up the excess solder with the soldering iron. Give it some nice smooth joints. And while the board's still warm, I'm going to need to clean up, just get rid of some of this flux. And because I need to wait for the board to cool down anyway, before we can test, I may as well clean it while we're waiting. Because this board's still quite warm, we're going to have quite incorrect readings uh, when it comes to testing with the multimeter and stuff. Because the board's warm and that um, effects the resistance of components and things like that so we're not gonna we're not gonna do any testing just yet okay there we go right so I think 
I think that's cooled down enough to give it some tests. Um, let's just move a couple of things. Okay. So, I think we're pretty much ready to test now. The, the components have been replaced, so we should be okay. Um, I'm hoping that this is all that's going to be wrong with this. Alright, so I've got my front panel connector. And I do need to be careful because if this does turn on and stay on, I'm going to have to shut it off and then put a heatsink on. But I don't want to put a heatsink on yet because if I do and it doesn't work, then that's more risk of damaging the board again by taking the heatsink off for, for a third time. So, for a second time, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, let's just... Uh, Let's just test and we'll see what's happening. So I've got the original power supply. So this power supply on now works 100%. And that should have cooled down enough. Right, and now it's not coming on at all, which is interesting. So have I tackled one short and then another short able to develop? That is the question. Can't feel any heat spots. Right, so it's not switching on at all now, which is very, very strange. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the multimeter. Um, hmm, that power supply doesn't appear to be on, does it? That's strange. Alright, so I've got an orange light. White light. Why did that turn itself off or was the cable just loose? That's strange. Orange light, white light. Orange light. And straight on, straight back off again. Yeah, straight on, straight back off again. So we still have an issue somewhere. Right, okay. Exactly the same symptoms. We still have some sort of an issue. Right. The question is, has it blown that resistor again? That's the question that I need to find out. So I'm going to have a quick scan round. See if I can figure something out. Right, so interestingly enough, the resistor that was completely missing on row number four, uh, this little resistor just here, has blown itself open. So if I put the put the probes on one side and onto the other side, I should get continuity on that resistor and I don't. So that's blown itself wide open, which explains why it would have knocked itself off. Now the multimeter is in continuity mode, as you can hear from the beep. Um, and it's blown itself open. So that means there's an issue with this circuit somewhere probably below the resistor. Uh, so I'm gonna say, that it's probably related to a voltage regulator. These little ICs here, it's a four, it's an 8-pin QFN style IC, and I think it's some sort of a voltage regulator chip. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because there's not really any information to go by. It's marked as, I think it's U9E1, 
So it's this little IC here, and I believe that that's probably gone bad, and that's probably what knocked the resistor off in the first place, um, because it probably burnt itself off the board. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to change it. Right, okay. Now, interestingly, the pad on this side doesn't really look too clever. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do exactly like I did before. I'm going to heat, I'm going to clean up the area and I'm going to add some new fresh leaded solder. Uh, get it ready for the replacement to go on. And I'm also going to have to, yeah, actually, yeah, I am. I'm going to have to remove that resistor as well. Um, so I'm going to remove that resistor as well while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up because that resistor is blown uh, that's essentially open line now which is obviously no good so these resistors essentially act as a fuse and they need to uh, complete the circuit to allow current to flow through So that's gone as well. So I'm going to have to replace that. I'm going to have to replace that resistor and I'm going to have to replace that chip. Um, and if it's not that, then I'm kind of stumped. Right, so let's add some fresh flux. And again, let's wick away the uh, the flux that the solder we've just added. The reason I wick the solder away that I've just added is because I want to get rid of any any kind of gunk that's underneath. So by wick it, by adding solder and then wicking away, it's allowing us to clean up the board. Um, that resistor I've already cleaned up that area, so I'm not concerned about that. Okay, so now let's add some more flux again. And I'm just going to re in these. These uh, pads for this chip. Okay, that should do it. So let's shift this board out of the way. Okay, so let's get this donor board out of the way pretty quickly. And let's put the the board what we're working on in the way okay so again exactly the same as before I'm just going to replace this using hot air and then I'll push it into place afterwards same with the chip so these little chips there's a little dot on them and they go the dot goes in the bottom right right so that's in position and like any QFN chip we have solder overflowing from underneath the chip so what we're going to do is just add some more flux to the chip and then just run across it with the soldering iron just to get rid of any excess solder And I put them in the wrong place. Never mind. So I'm going to run across with the soldering iron. Just to get rid of those bridges. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add some more flux. I'm going to turn the air up full blast. And I'm going to let surface tension pull these into position and make sure that they're soldered correctly. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace these two MOSFETs up here as well. Why not? Let's get rid of them. Yeah, that definitely smells like urine. Oh man, that definitely, definitely smells like urine. Whew, Jesus. Uh, yeah, so let's get rid of them. Oh wow, that stinks. Uh, right, so... Again, like before, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to make sure the area is nice and clean, and then... And then I can add some fresh solder ready for the new components. Okay. Let's use some wick. And once again, let's clean up. Right, so while that MOSFET's off, I'm going to test this coil above it. I just want to make sure that this coil has continuity. It's a little bit difficult to get to. Yep, so the coil's good. It's a little tricky to get to, but uh, if you can get to it, you can test it easily in continuity mode. It's not too difficult. Uh, we should have continuity on the coil. Right, so... Let's find... Uh, there we are. Okay, so let's add some more flux. Uh, let's get these pads prepared. Okay. So now I'm going to grab them off the donor board. Okay. Okay, so let's add some flux now. And I'm just going to clean up these joints using flux. Let's knock these capacitors back into place as well. Right, so this entire circuit has been replaced now. So the only thing that hasn't been replaced on this circuit is the coil. And that was testing okay, so... We should be good with this circuit. That resistor shouldn't blow anymore. Good. Okay, so let's clean up while that board's still warm. Alright, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get it cleaned up just so as we can test it. So I'm going to do that now. By the time I've got the camera into position, the board should have cooled down sufficiently enough. I am waiting for the heat gun to turn off. It has to cool down before it turns off the air. But we should be good to at least test this. So let's get a front panel P 
Pebbleed. Um, that's still a little bit warm actually, but uh, we should be okay. Right, and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to actually take a fan. And I'm not going to take the one that's to this console because it needs a good clean. There's some all over it and I don't want to, don't want to be using it. So, I'm going to take a heatsink and fan. Because then you guys, without me having to move the camera, you guys can get an indication of what's going on based by the fan. Okay, so... What is the situation? Ah, uh, that's, uh, that's just turned itself off again. This isn't going to work. Right, okay, so the question is, is this going to turn off? That thing's come on, but the light's not on. And the APU's getting quite warm. Right, this is good signs. This means we're getting close. The light's not come on, but that's turned on. Right, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a clamp. Again, same as the heatsink, I don't want to use the one that came with it. Simple reason being it is covered in fuzz. So I'm going to use one of my own clamps. And I'll probably just leave these on and then just clean out the other fan and stuff. Well, I'll verify the work first, but I'll probably clean it out and just uh, leave this one on. Just because I know it's a clean fan. Alright, so let's try and get this clamp on. Okay, so that heat sink's clamped down there, which means we can leave this running. That's good news. Right, we can leave this thing running now. So, let's take the power supply. Right, that spun but didn't come on. Lights on, staying on. Oh, that's brilliant news. That is fantastic news. This might be fixed. Right, let me take the hard drive. This might be working, guys. Oh, this is brilliant news if it is. So I think what's happened just is because the problem with these is when you've got them loose like these, this, this ribbon shorts out and it turns itself on and things. Um, so it might it might have just been that the connector wasn't in properly. It's turned itself on, but it wasn't enough to get the light on. Uh, maybe this was too loose to get the light to come on. Uh, I don't know. But either way, that come on and stayed on then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a HDMI lead. Uh, let's turn it on. Are, are we going to get a picture on the screen? Yes! We've got a picture on the screen. Yes! Oh yes, I love my job. Yes, I love my job. That is great news. That is fantastic. Are we going to load to the dashboard? This is the customer's hard drive. It's my fan. It's my clamp. Uh, everything else is the customer's. Uh, and it's my front panel as well, sorry. Uh, everything else is the customer's. Oh, this is brilliant news. This is fantastic. Please load to the dashboard. Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to go and grab a controller. So, I'll be back shortly. 
Okay, got myself a controller. And I'm going to plug it in through USB because we don't have a Wi-Fi board attached. Um, I can obviously test full functionality once it's reassembled. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and test it test out the initial functions okay so let's continue Oh, that's brilliant. That's awesome. Yep, we're reading the hard drive fine. We're not going to be able to connect to internet because we've got no Wi-Fi card. Uh, let's just shut it down. Let's get this console reassembled and uh, and then we'll get back to testing it fully once it's reassembled. Oh, this is brilliant news. This is absolutely brilliant news. Right, okay, so... Let's get rid of this, because that's mine. I'm going to keep this fan on. Um, actually, no, I can't. I've got to reapply the thermal paste. Um, so I've got to take it off anyway. But I'm going to, keep, I'm going to, I'm going to use this fan. Um, just save sitting there scrubbing that one. What I'll do with that one is I'll disassemble it all and I'll put it through the dishwasher. Uh, the reason for that is because I firmly believe that this is urine, which has gone onto this device. So... I'll put it through the dishwasher and um, I'll get it all fully cleaned out. But I'll give the customer this fan. I need to test that fan and make sure that it does work, of course. But as long as that fan works, um, then I'll give him my fan. Save me having to worry about rushing to clean this out. And uh, yeah, it, it just gonna, it's just going to save a little bit of time. Unfortunately, I didn't get to upload today because my internet is going through an upgrade and it's a little bit intermittent so every time i go, every time i went to upload this morning it was it was uh just crashing and stopping the upload which was quite annoying i do have a few videos which are due to go out but i didn't get to upload so hopefully i'll get to upload this tonight for an eight o'clock launch tomorrow. Um, this is this clamp is proving rather difficult to come off. It's quite annoying. Actually, you know what? Let's clean that fan. Let's clean that fan. You know why? Because it's part of the process. I'm not going to use. Ow! I'm not going to use the. Uh, I'm not going to use my own fan. I'm going to clean that one. It's part of the process. I'll do it the way I normally clean a fan out. But I'll use isopropyl alcohol to sterilise it. And I'll also wear gloves while I'm doing it. So this, this clamp is um, being rather difficult. To be honest. There we go. So this side should come off okay now. If you're wondering why I put my finger there, I, I, I know that some of you won't have watched any more of my videos. But if you're wondering why I'm putting my finger there, it's to stop me from stabbing through the board. Ow! Yeah, just like that. Um, I'm going to put a glove on, because this is proving rather tricky. And that hurts, so... Yeah... <laughs> But that's why I put that's why I put my finger there just to stop it from stabbing through the board because if I slip, even if I stab through my finger, my finger's going to heal. 
might take a couple of weeks, but my finger's going to heal. But I really don't want to be stabbing through the board because that's just way more hassle than it's worth. So I'll put my finger there just to stop it from uh, from stabbing through the board. This clamp, though, it really doesn't want to come off, does it? Okay. So let's get this board ready to go back inside the chassis. I've got to clean up a little bit more anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the old thermal paste off, just using a Q-tip. I really had a feeling this was going to be an APU issue on this one, so I'm so glad it isn't, because I don't really fancy sitting there reflowing APUs. Or worse still, reboiling APUs and replacing them. Um, like I think I mentioned yesterday, if you change the APU, you've got to change the ECOM as well. So it's just it's just way too much work. So if the APU had ended up being bad because of liquid damage and a reball didn't help, then yeah, it would have been a it would have been a full APU replacement. That would have meant data loss for the customer. Uh, because I don't believe we'd be able to swap the APU without reformatting the drive. Um, which is a bit stupid, really, but it is what it is. But I really didn't fancy changing an APU because it's just way too much work, and I don't have a stencil. I'm waiting for them to come, so... It would have been a reball and place every single solder board on by hand. That is not going to be a fun job, considering there's around about 2,000 solder balls underneath this chip. And that is not an exaggeration. The 508 underneath the, CP, underneath the South Bridge, I've done those by hand, and that's, not, that's certainly not a fun job. So I wouldn't want to do the APU. It's twice the size, and the balls are half the size. So it's not a fun job to do. Right, okay, that will do for the APU. So now I'm just going to give this entire area a good soak in isopropyl. Just like so. And I'm going to give it a real good scrub because I want to get rid of any kind of residue that might cause issues in the future. So in total... This has had three resistors, technically two, but it blew one. So three resistors, a, I think, what I think is a power, power uh, a voltage regulation chip, and three MOSFETs as well. So all in all, cost-wise, not, include, not including time, but cost-wise, I'm going to say around about £15 worth of parts to get this working. So the customer is going to be paying £45 for this, £30 for the job, and about £15 in part value. So even though these come off a donor board, those donor boards still cost me money, and therefore I still have to charge for the chips and stuff that I use off the donor boards. Um, because no matter what, I haven't been giving them donor boards for free, so I can't give them away for free. It just wouldn't make no sense. I'll give the odd one away. If it was just like one little resistor, then I wouldn't be bothered. But when you're taking half of a circuit away to fix another circuit, you've got to charge for it, unfortunately. It's just one of those things that I have to do. Right. So that's had a nice clean. Um, I'm not too worried about drying that off because it's only isopropyl alcohol. And it'll evaporate itself anyway. Um, I'm going to give this little area a bit of a clean as well because it's a little bit sticky still. So let's give this a little scrub. I really don't know what liquid this was, but I'm going to say, given the smell, it was probably urine. Probably from a family pet. 
a little word of advice keep your console up high don't let it near your pets and don't urinate on it don't urinate on your console okay so that's a nice clean that's uh, I'd say that's sufficient So let's get some thermal paste now. Put a nice healthy dollop of thermal paste there. Keep this nice and cool. And I'm not giving them that fan. Nope, they can have their own fan back. And I'm gonna clean it. So this is quite cruddy, this, uh, this fan. It's quite a mess. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna Wipe it down to get rid of the dust. So this would have been done anyway. I would have cleaned the heat sink anyway. But it's obviously got to have a much deeper clean. Given the fact that it's got something all over it. And uh, yeah it doesn't smell too good either. So... So let's, uh, let's remove the fan. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pop my other glove on because I've got to handle this heat sink fully. So pop the other glove on. And uh, let's just give it a brush down. So now, I'm just going to get this thermal paste off first. And this should come up clean enough. Now I'm going to soak it in some uh, isopropyl. Let that soak in for a couple of seconds. I'm just going to clean this fan as best as I can. It's probably not going to come up too clean by the looks of it. Yeah, and this is this is one of the reasons I don't really want to keep this fan myself and give them a better fan. Because I've got to sit here and do this. And for me to sell a console, because the parts that I use, I'm not going to be able to pass this off to another customer, basically. So, whereas this is this customer's fan, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass this off to another customer basically, I'm just going to try and get this as clean as I possibly can get it. And it's come up fairly clean. Yeah, I mean that that's that's acceptable, really. It's come up fairly clean. Uh, it's, you're never going to get this perfect, to be honest. Not without buffing it out with a sander, and I haven't got one, so be out of luck there. But it's fine. It'll do. Right. Okay. So let's pop this heat sink back on. So the overhang goes over the. MOSFET area, uh, it doesn't actually keep them cool, it just overhangs them. Um, I am however going to just reuse their clamp because, uh, re I'm just going to reuse my own clamp because I, I genuinely have not got a clue where I've put theirs. Um, it's around somewhere but I haven't got a clue where the customer's clamp is. I'll give them a nice clean one, I don't mind the clamp, I've got stacks of them to be honest. Okay, so there's the heat sink back on. But yeah, like I said, I've got stacks of clamps. I haven't got stacks of fans because I've used them all. So I'm just going to give the fan a brush down. So let's pop that back into position. Let's clip that in. There we go. And that's good to go. So now I've got to tackle all of this inside here. 
This is a lot of uh, a lot of liquid, a lot of liquid damage. So, and now we're going to tackle this in here. So this is quite a lot. Um, I'm not going to be able to sit here and scrub this with the toothbrush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this in the house. I'm going to put it in the sink and I'm going to I'm going to disinfect it and bleach it out properly. I'm going to leave it to soak for about ten minutes and then I'll come back and it should be it should be good to go. This has had a nice long soak in the kitchen sink. It's come up fairly well. It's not perfect, but it's come up fairly well and it's not going to affect the use of the console anyway. Um, unfortunately, that's the best I can do with it, um, you know, without leaving it for several hours. And I just don't have that kind of time. So, uh, without leaving it for several hours to soak and then using some sort of a really hard brush on it it's not going to come completely clean um it, like i said it's not going to affect the use of the console so i'm not too concerned about it um the main issues have been resolved so let's get that back inside there now okay so now let's Let's take some screws. That's the wrong one. But yeah, I'm not really overly concerned about a little bit of damage on the outer casing. Like I said, it's not going to affect the use of the console one bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm overall happy with the way this has turned out. Okay, so so I'm going to get this reassembled, and I'll skip through this bit because it it doesn't need to be seen really. So I'll fast forward through this bit, and uh, then we can get to testing this properly. Right, so here we are, ladies and gents. The console's back together. Uh, Unfortunately, I did have to cut the stickers, uh, but that's the only way to get these back on. There is no way I'm getting this front panel back on without taking this front panel off of the main housing. So, yeah, it's one of them things. Uh, right, I've spoken to the customer, and she didn't actually know what it was. She said, I think the cat has peed on it, which makes sense, because it stunk. Um, so, obviously, I told her what I'd said on the video about how I think it's urine. Um, you know, I don't say anything to on the video what I wouldn't say to the customers. Um, but yeah, I was right by the looks of it. She doesn't know for sure, but I was right in the sense that um, it was urine. So what I'm doing now is we need to get any scent of urine off this case. So obviously the cat has sat on top of the case and and has urinated on it. Uh, so, yeah, um, I'm cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol to get rid of any scent. Right, so let's give this a final test, shall we? And hopefully everything works. So I'm going to take the perilead. Uh, let's turn it on in three, two, one. And that's cutting out the power supply. Right, so that's on. Right, let's plug her in. Let's turn it on. That's not good. That's not coming on again.
Not good. It's not coming on again. That's pretty bad news. Oh dear. Why does this always happen? This is a problem with liquid damage. This is going to have to come back apart again. This is a problem with liquid damage. Sometimes it'll come on and then it'll just stay on. And then other times, it'll come on, it'll work fine, and then you'll turn it off and it'll stay off. That's really annoying because I've just told this customer that this works. Right, well, okay, so there's something really, really weird going on with this. Um, I'm not really sure what, but for some unknown reason, it died again when I put it back together. And now it's working intermittently. It's working randomly. So I don't know what's causing it to kill itself. But what I do know though is that there's still something wrong with this circuit here now. The readings on the multimeter are all fine. Uh, the resistor hasn't blown again. And I don't know what's going on. I'm completely stumped. One component here isn't quite right and I don't know what. I'm going to start with um, this chip here. So this chip here is a power regulation chip and this distributes power as far as, as far as I can gather this distributes power to the rest of the board so power comes in here it goes through these capacitors here and evens out the ripples and things and then it comes through to here it goes to this chip here and then it goes from this chip to this power regulation here um, and then from there it distributes everywhere across the board so there's something wrong with one of these chips it's either this chip here it could be this chip here, which is another voltage regulator. Uh, or it could be one of the MOSFETs. And it could also be one of these voltage regulators here. I think these are some kind of diode. I'm not 100% sure. But I don't know, in all honesty, what's causing it to kill itself. Um, so, off camera, what I did was I basically took it all back apart, obviously. And then I plugged in the fan and I plugged in the power and the thing come on and then I did it again and it didn't come on which is really weird it's just not making any sense at all so right now it's not coming on But now it is. See, that's on. How weird is that? So now, the, the console thinks it's on right now. The console thinks it's on right now. I've just unplugged it, obviously, so it's going to slow down. don't know whether that's because it's trying to cool down the APU, because the APU is quite hot. But I don't know whether it's because it's trying to cool down the APU, or, or what. So basically, something weird is going on, and I don't know what. So I'm going to cool down the APU. So now the heat sinks on it and, it and the APU is cooled down almost instantly, which is which is perfectly normal. The heat's all dissipated to the heat sink. So now if I try and turn it on, it's not coming on. What you see? It's not coming on. Right, so like I said, I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to change this chip here. Because there is a little bit of crud still around here, and I've got a feeling that this chip might be a little bit faulty. Not completely gone, but I reckon it's probably bad, um, to the point where it's causing issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this chip here, I'm going to take one off a donor board, and I'm going to change that. And then we'll see what's happening afterwards. Right, okay, so pin one on this, when you're looking at the chip 
when you're looking at the board with the MOSFETs right in front of you. Um, so my hand is here, so the MOSFETs are right in front of me. So pin number one is on the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chip off. I'm going to take one off my known good board and I'm going to pop it onto here. Right, and I can definitely smell urine on this area here as well, so liquid has almost definitely got to this point. There we go. So that's the old chip off. Right. So now I'm going to take a donor board, and I'm going to make sure this is a, that, that this is the correct chip, first of all. So, because I can never read them under the microscope, I soak it in isopropyl alcohol and then dry it off. And while it's drying, it allows me to read the writing. So this is a NCP4204. If you type that in on Google, you'll find that it's a, some sort of a power, power regulation chip. Um, I haven't looked too much into what the chip does, but it's a power regulation chip to say the least. And um, I have known these to go before. So it's fairly common uh, in terms of liquid damage. Um, this chip fails quite regular. I know this chip is working on this board because like I said earlier, the only thing that's wrong with this board is the fact that it doesn't have a disk drive so we can't install software. The entire circuit actually works. So in terms of parts, I can take absolutely any part off this board and know full well that it's going to work on any board as long as the part matches um, because yeah like I said it's uh, it's a working board or it was a working board there we go so there's our donor chip so before I put this chip on I need to replace the solder that's on the main board with leaded solder and the easiest way to do that is just to add leaded solder to the mix Right, so that's roughly in the right place now. Of course, we've got a lot of solder liquid leakage. So, to solve that, just take the soldering iron tip, and we're just going to run it around the edges. Uh, I think I might have knocked a couple of components. But that's fine. I'll check in a minute. And if needs be, I'll put them back. Okay, so now I'm going to check this under the microscope that make sure that we've not got any legs out of place and things. Make sure it's all nicely soldered up. Right, so that appears to be good. But what I need to do is I need to make sure that I didn't knock any components off. And if I did, I need to figure out what and I need to replace them. Um, So here's the donor board, and I'm just going to check over the circuit. Right, so I am definitely missing a capacitor, definitely. So I had a feeling I was, 
I felt it on the tip of the soldering iron, but it's way too small to see. So I'll just take it off the diner board. There we go. So that's that. It's a little double of flux. Ah, the capacitor was still there. It was just lifted up. Oh, uh, never mind. I'm just going to blow it in with hot air. The capacitor was there, but now it is stuck on the end of the soldier now. It's fine. Okay, that's back in place. That circuit is now complete again. I think. I'm just going to double check. Okay, so... My heat gun is still blowing away, but... Let's just uh, pop the heatsink in place, or thereabout. So what I'm going to do, rather than putting the clamp on again, I'm just going to pop it into place, and then to keep it pushing down on the uh, on the APU, I'm just going to put the board on a bit of an angle. Because, uh, yeah, I don't really want to clamp it down. Right, so, power, there's a bit of a mess on this table now, and we also need front panel. That switched on. Fan spin. There we go. But the question is Is it going to come on again? And more to the point Is it going to stay on? Right, that's come on again. So what I'm going to do, because this board hasn't completely cooled down yet, and that can affect the way chips behave. So I'm going to give this two minutes. I'm going to go grab myself a drink, and I'll be back, and then I'll test it again before we put it back together. Right, okay, so I'll have myself a quick drink and a little break. Uh, let's test it again, shall we? Let's see what's happening. We we'll get the fan nudge. Turn it on. Should get fan spin now. Bink. That's staying on. Right, I'm not going to leave it on too long because I don't want it to overheat. Uh, but that's staying on. Right, okay. Uh, I think that chip was at fault. I think that chip chip was intermittent. Uh, so it's the NCP4204, and if we take a quick search on Google, you'll see that it's a PMIC, which is a power management integrated circuit, and it comes in several different form factors. So it's a voltage regulator by on semiconductor, and it's a QFN style package, which is quad flat no leads. Um, and uh, I've never really found a data sheet for it, but let's see. Uh, okay, so. So there's quite a few. Um, quite a few data sheets for these. Um, I think I'd need to find out the exact chip number, so let me take a look at that. So it's GAC1331G. 
and it can't find one. Um, never mind. Okay, um, it's a voltage regulator. Um, basically, it controls power distribution to the board. And I have known them to go quite a few times. So, uh, that's what prompted me to actually check in that chip, or rather change in that chip. Um, and now it seems to be working. So, I think that chip was probably intermittent. Um, so, yeah. I mean, what can I say? So, let's get this reassembled. And then, fingers crossed, when we reassemble it now, it's going to work when we've uh, put it all back into the chassis. So I'll skip through this bit, because you've already seen it once. And I'll be back in a second. Now that's back together, I can pop this front panel on. I'm really hoping this is fixed now. Really, I'm hoping it doesn't show any more signs of uh, issues. Obviously, it needs to be thoroughly tested. Because the thing is with water damage is something can arise just after an hour's an hour of use so with water damage everything has to be fully tested and it has to be tested for more than five minutes see when it's something like a video chip or a hdmi port or something else or just a just a random blown mosfet then I can get away with just making sure it comes on. But when it comes to something like liquid damage, I can't. I have to sit here and test it for much longer than five minutes. Okay. So let's pop the sync button guide back in. And the side panel. So that's fully reassembled now. So now it's fully reassembled, hopefully this is second time lucky, and hopefully we don't run into any more issues, hopefully. Right, so I'm going to pop in the HDMI lead, and I'm going to turn it on in 3, 2, 1, and it's stayed on so far. It's picked up, there we go. So we have a green screen again. So we're back at the working stage. And now, I'm gonna need to test this for the next hour or so, at least. Um, so, I'm gonna leave the video there. Well, I'm gonna wait for it to load into the dashboard first. This drive is registering the button press. So what I'm going to do first of all before we actually leave it there is I'm going to pop a disk in. I'm just going to make sure the disk drive reads and then I'm going to test it for an hour. I'm going to leave, well I'm actually just going to leave it switched on for an hour and then I'm going to come back to it and then when I come back to it I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes and then I'm going to come back and turn it back on again. Make sure it turns on, make sure that it's consistent, and uh, hopefully everything's good, fingers crossed. There we go. Right, so let's get off that screen. And I'm going to pop in project cars. Okay, it takes in a disc. And it's reading the disc, which is good. So the disc is reading on the right-hand side. So I'm going to leave this for an hour now, like I said. I'm going to leave it for an hour. I'm going to let this install. I'm going to let the console warm up and do its thing for an hour. And, uh, and then I'll be back and I'll see how it's behaving. Right, this has been on for around about an hour. And uh, it seems to be working. So I've just run an update on this as well. So basically it needed updating to be able to 
go online. So let's load up YouTube. Uh, is this going to make me put passwords in? I think it is, yeah. I think it's going to make me put passwords in, which is a bit annoying. Yeah, it's going to make me put passwords in, so I can't actually test the game. But uh, it appears to be working. It appears to be fine, so... Uh, I'm going to say this is working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut it down. And then I'm going to turn it back on. And all I'm doing this for is just to make sure it comes back on. And then I'm going to declare this as fixed. Right, so that's gone fully off. Turn it back on. And it didn't go fully off. It went into uh, standby. Never mind. Um, yeah, cool. Um, it seems to be working. It seems to be absolutely fine. So, as you can see, it's coming on and it's staying on. It's been on for around about an hour. Um, the console's not warm. It, it's it's warm enough, but it's not warm, warm. Um, which means the thermal paste that I put on there is doing its job. Which is pretty cool. Um, it's recognising the game. It's connecting to the internet. Uh, it's run a software update, which means the disk drive is working properly. Uh, the game didn't install because it wanted me to sign in, which is a bit annoying, because I can't actually test it without logging into my own profile. And I'll do that off camera, but I'm going to declare this as fixed now, because it's actually coming on and staying on, and it's coming on consistently. Whether I turn it off by the button, or whether I turn it off by pulling the plug, it's still coming on and staying on, so that's absolutely fine. Yep, so that's still on. As you can see by the light, it's still on. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Right, so I think it's time to call this done. So all that's left to do now is just to summarise. So basically, this console came in for liquid damage, which was caused by cat, a cat urinating on the top of the console. Um, the urine went through the console and onto the power regulation area. It blew two MOSFETs, uh, or I think it blew two MOSFETs. I changed the two anyway, just in case, uh, because they'll just look bad. Uh, so it blew the two MOSFETs, and it also blew a resistor. Um, so it, it blew two MOSFETs and two resistors. So the MOSFET that I thought looked bad, it blew that resistor, and another resistor on row four was also completely missing so and that was that was caused by the power regulation ic the power regulation ic got changed the mosfets got changed the resistors got changed and also the pmic as well so the power management ic now i didn't realize that the power management ic was bad until i reassembled it um, and then suddenly that power management ic must have just died uh, it was actually not dead, it was just inconsistent. So I changed that, and now it seems to be consistently coming on and staying on. Um, it's run through an update. The disk drive is working. Uh, the hard drive is working fine. The disk drive is being recognised, because if it wasn't, we would have got an E100 error. Um, it's not overheating. It's not doing anything untoward. It's not turning itself off. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful and entertaining at the same time. It's certainly been a challenging one and a very long repair compared to usual. Now, if I'd have changed that PMIC to start with, we probably probably never would have had the second lot of issues. Um, but overall, I'm happy with the result. Uh, it's a bit, a bit of a shame that it was cat urine, urine, but there's a lesson to be learnt there. Don't let your cat sit on top of the console. Um, the problem is... When the console's warm, a cat is naturally going to want to sit on it. Um, that's just the way cats are. They, they find the warmest spot and they sit on it. The cat probably wasn't fully house trained or may have become ill. I'm not going to say it wasn't house trained because I don't know. I, I've never met the cat, obviously. Um, so the cat was either not house trained properly or it may have become ill or was just too, too comfortable to move and obviously ended up urinating on the console, which, as we all know, any kind of liquid is not good for a console. Um, the good news is we've got it repaired. It all all seems to be fully working and I'm overall happy. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up and 
if you want to see more videos where I attempt to fix things like this, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so you're notified when I upload. When I upload. I'm trying really, really hard to get to 5,000 subs by the end of the year. So if you could subscribe, it would really mean a lot to me. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you all later. Bye for now.